Hello, a car here. I am doing a garden slash bug update video. And this one is on something that some who may grow parsley or cilantro or carrots or anything in the carrot family may uh, come across. Something that usually would be considered a pest, but for me I like to raise them and I'll explain why. Uh, it's called the Eastern Black Swallowtail Butterfly. And this is the larvae. Uh, a fifth in star larvae, a fourth in star uh, larvae. They go through these four in stars. They start off as a little guy like this, a little bit smart, a little bit smaller than this. This little guy is in his second in star, and they uh, their defense is meant to look like a bird dropping. In the third in star, they lose that color, but they still keep some of their uh, thorns. And then, by the fourth one, they get these bright colors. As some of you may know, bright colors in nature usually indicate I'm not a good meal. So, that's his defense as an adult. But, what a uh, defense that these all share, no matter what instar they're in, is that they have what's called an O.C. Matrim, I believe it's pronounced. And, what it is, uh, you see over here, by his head, how it's a little bit, uh, like of a lump. That's a flap of skin, and underneath it is what is, well, it's an orange organ, and it looks like a Y. If you've uh, played Pokemon, Caterpie is a prime example, that little thing that he has, that's exactly what it looks like, only not as pink, it's more orange with this one. That uh, Caterpie is actually based off of a type of swallowtail, but just not the exact same species as this one. And so here's the little guy, or big guy, that's the little guy. And some people view these as a pest because, you see, this is one leaf here that this little guy was on, and he finished in one day, and now he's on the other one. You can only imagine how much more so this big guy eats. This one here is a more prime example. You see, he eats it down to the, um, down to the base, the entire thing. So they are quite destructive when it comes to that. But what I like to do is I like to keep them. And here's why. I will keep them in a, uh like in a little thing like this with a little water and I'll put the leaves that are of less quality a few good leaves just because um, you know I don't want them to have the poorest quality and I have some extra to spare but I give them leaves like this the less quality leaves to feed on so I'm controlling what they eat and then I will usually put a, uh, a plastic container around here it serves a double purpose. If they were to escape from that, they're not going to escape from the plastic container. As long as it doesn't have, like, ridges for it to climb up off of. But usually they will never leave their host plant. They don't like to wander around a lot. If they are and they're in their uh, last instar like this guy, that's because they're getting ready to form a chrysalis. And you should put them into another container with, like, a uh, stick that they could climb on uh, with a lid with uh, holes for them to breathe so that way they won't escape but they will have somewhere to form their chrysalis on that's uh... with that and with these guys they're normally never going to escape I have, I've had these two on here their entire lives and they haven't escaped yet and the reason why I keep the plastic as I said is double purpose one it prevents them from escaping but also it traps all their um, all their fecal all their fecal matter, all their feces, all their uh, poop, and you take that stuff if you're a gardener, and it's loaded with not just nutrients with but with beneficial bacteria which you can add into your compost, and it will help feed the bacteria in the compost that will break down the compost to make a better quality compost. You know, like worm castings, it's the same thing, same concept. So you can do that, so, so it serves a dub double purpose. The less quality leaves get fed to these guys. These guys poop it out, it becomes fertilizer, and then when the new plants grow, by the time that happens, these guys are adults. You release them in your garden, and they pollinate the plants. They go into seed, and the plants go on for another generation. So these guys are in, even though they may be a pest, they also are important to nature as a pollinator and so I would not recommend killing them off with insecticides or pesticides besides it's hard to do 
pesticides, herbicides, and things like that without, you know, going into the border of inorganic. If you're okay with inorganic, then go right ahead. But if you're an organic grower, like I try and do as best I can, then that may be something that may be difficult to do is to find organic herbicides or pesticides. I just say let them live. Same thing with tomato hornworms, tobacco hornworms, any type of uh, caterpillar pest, whatever plant that they're on that they're eating, you could feed them the lesser quality leaves and then when they're adults you release them. Yes, they will lay eggs. Yes, the eggs will hatch. Yes, they will feed on your plants. But usually the second generation or third generation will will be when your plants are slowing down anyways. And these ones will usually turn into their little chrysalises, pupae, whatever it is. And will hibernate in that state until the following year. And then those adults will pollinate your first crop. And that's really sort of what uh, forms your main crop. Yes, bees are involved, but so are the butterflies and moths. And any insects that feed off of nectar. So that's my little update on these guys. I Well, more like an introduction to these guys. I do have one chrysalis. But I am going to wait until this one here transforms. Before I make a video on that. Uh, I know I don't make many videos. And I keep saying that I want to do more regular. But uh, I got out of school. So I thought I would have more time. But now I'm working uh, six days a week. And so I really do not have the time to uh, make that many videos, and when I do, I'm usually very exhausted. But, um, yeah, I'm doing fine, and the plants are doing fine. I do plan to do a video soon, hopefully. But for those of you that have um, stayed subscribed to me, those of you that still reach out to me and, uh, and uh, post messages that I am thankful for, you know, helps me to... Um, keep wanting to produce more videos and uh, thanks for putting up with my long gaps between uploads so I'll give you guys one more look if it will focus there he is. I really find that nature really is beautiful these guys are pretty I'm guessing because he's not really eating a lot, that he's really, really close to pupating. He is of size to pupate. He's not really eating as much anymore. And as I said with the hornworms, when they would stop eating and start turning firm, that, that usually meant that the chrysalis or pupae is being made underneath the skin. So I wonder if maybe that's what's happening here with this guy right now. I know uh, the pre-pupal stage varies from caterpillar to caterpillar, but I do tend to notice that with each one, they usually slow down their eating habits like this guy. With uh, these particular caterpillars, because they are a butterfly, uh, most moths will dig underground and find a place to hide, or will make like a, um, a silk ball around them before they form their chrysalises. But these guys don't form a little silk button, just like a normal butterfly. But instead of hanging upside down, what they will do is make almost like a, a single strand uh, of silk hammock. And they will, their rear end will, um, will attach to the silk button. And then the little um, silk will go around the top part there. And then he'll just lean back in it. And then that's where he will be. And then he'll form his chrysalis. And then that's the state they will be in. Uh, you'll be able to see that when this guy forms his pupae and I film, uh, hopefully I f get to film the actual uh, transformation from caterpillar to pupae. But if not, you will get to see the pupae and the uh, string hammock and the, sh and the little uh, string button that I told you about. Which are made from silk, by the way. If you have silk clothing, most likely it comes from bugs. It's almost guaranteed to come from uh, bug saliva that's been... Uh, that's been uh, tampered with with enzymes inside of the bug and made into fine silk. So the more you know. There's my little caterpillar. Let's see if we can see what he's doing here. So thanks for watching. 
Here's this guy up close. If it will focus. Not on the rug. There you go. Alright, so I will be seeing you guys later. Thanks for watching this video. And uh, if you have any questions about uh, raising uh, eastern black swallowtail caterpillars or tomato hornworms, tobacco hornworms, if you have any questions in regards to what plants these animals can eat, feel free to ask down below. If you have any other questions in relation to gardening or insects, you can feel free to ask them. Uh, I may, I'm not an expert, so I may not know the answer, but um, if I do know an answer, I'll be sure to answer it. Or if anyone else is reading the uh, question in the comment section and they know the answer, they too can reply as well. And so, yeah, please uh, rate this video, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, uh, dog videos, cat videos, um, my brother eating extremely hot uh, peppers and things like that, then please subscribe and uh, see you later. Bye-bye.